So in this video, we're gonna be breaking down and talking about exactly how much money you need to buy a house here in the Columbus area, so stay tuned. Hey everyone, Andy Howe, local real estate agent and investor here in Columbus, Ohio. And today I wanted to talk a little bit about what it takes, how much money you need and what expenses are associated with purchasing a house. So before I get started, please reach down, hit that subscribe button. We've been making awesome videos about Columbus, what it's like to live here, about the real estate in Columbus and just in general, the cool things that are going on here in Columbus. So what does it take to buy a home in Columbus? How much money you need? Well, there's a couple different components, expenses you can expect to pay. Let's start off with down payment. Now, how much money do you need for a down payment? Well, I hate to answer a question with another question. Nobody likes that, but um, it's important. Circumstances are different. So the fact is there are just so many different loan programs out there. Historically, 20% has been the number with home values and everything increasing, especially here in Columbus over the past several years. 20% can be a big nut. It can be a big dollar value to swallow. And so there are other options if you don't have that 20%. So there's, for instance, with conventional financing, you can put as little as 5% down. With FHA financing, for instance, you can put as little as 3.5% down. And then with like VA type loans, you can put 0% down. So tons of options. Again, it depends on your specific situations. Anytime you put less than 20% down, you're gonna be looking at an additional expense to your mortgage called private mortgage insurance. And what this is, any type of loan you do, with the exception of VA, um, when you put down less than 20%, the bank's gonna require you to pay this private mortgage insurance until you get to that 20% equity stake. So, when you do get to that, you can uh, either do a loan recast, you can do a refinance, and you can actually drop that PMI off of the loan, which in most cases, as soon as you can make that happen, you should. So, that's the first option. The second option is an FHA, loan so typically these are geared towards first-time home buyers uh, they are allow you to put less money down uh, the debt to income ratios that lenders allows are going to be a little bit looser you can have lower income and higher expenses compared to say a conventional mortgage so depending on your situation fha could be a great option especially if you're buying a multifamily property um, another option is like a va loan a va loan you can, uh, thanks any vets for your service, by the way, but you can put 0% down. And in this case, there's no PMI, there's no private mortgage insurance. So in probably 100% of the cases, if you can qualify for a VA loan, that's gonna be your best bet. Um, but there's a whole host of other programs to actually lower that percentage of down payment down. Now you're still gonna have to bring the cash from somewhere to get to the closing table. But here in Columbus, there's a, a down payment assistance program called OFA. Um, you do have to repay that. Um, but there's another one called Communities First that's actually through Cincinnati. You don't have to repay that. So um, I'm not an expert per se on these, but I work with lenders every day who are experts. So if you have any questions, on the uh, down payment assistance grants, reach out, let me know, drop a comment below, and I will get you connected with an excellent lender who can help you navigate that process. So just to summarize, if we're, if we're buying an average house or a median uh, house, today that's 191,000, we're in uh, July 2020. For easy math, let's call it 200,000. So on an FHA mortgage, that means you'll need to put down a minimum of $7,000, 3.5%, dollars $200,000 purchase price. For a conventional loan, that's gonna be $10,000, right? Not a lot different. If you could, Again, if you could do the conventional, better to go that way. The next option is gonna be a VA, and that's goose egg. You don't have to put any money down on that. So that covers down payments. I mentioned there are a few other expenses you can, you can anticipate paying for. Uh, the first one is inspections. So this is not gonna be required by any bank, uh, but this is kind of a CYA type of thing. You wanna make sure that there's not anything glaringly wrong with the property that you're going to have to 
take care of in the first year or two, or if, or if you do, you want to know about it. So an inspector is going to come in, they're going to tell you everything that's uh, wrong with the property, everything that's uh, potentially marginal with the property, and everything that's good. These are going to range from anywhere between $300 to $1,000, depending on the number of inspections you do. Um, so that's an expense that you will have to come out of pocket with prior to closing. Uh, the next one that is often overlooked is closing costs. So these closing costs, a good rule of thumb, is that this is going to be about 2% of the overall loan. Now, again, this is a rule of thumb and, and a conservative one. Uh, if you're getting a loan though for less than 100000 that's going to be a little bit potentially higher than 2%. However, if you're getting a loan for say half a million, it's probably going to be lower than that 2%. Closing costs are going to be you know, paying your lender for the work that they do, the title company for recording the deed, for handling all the money, and making sure everybody gets paid off and you get the property uh, without any potential future liens on it. And then that's gonna be things like prepaid. So part of uh, these closing costs, your lender is gonna require you to pay a certain amount of monthly property taxes and property insurance. Again, this is going to be between two and six months worth of those expenses, and that's going to go in your escrow account. So, um, but again, you got to have this money as part of closing, so it's important to remember. Let's go back to our $200,000 example. Again, FHA loan, 3.5% down, that's $7,000 for the down payment alone, plus the 2%, that's another $4,000. So you're looking at about eleven five, dollars right, to get to, get to take a $200,000 property down with an FHA mortgage. If you're doing a conventional mortgage though, that's going to be about $14,000. Again, 5% down, uh, that's $10,000 on a $200,000 property plus the 2% uh, closing costs, which are $4,000. So that should give you a pretty good idea about what you can anticipate to put down and, and purchase a home with. Again, there's tons of options and it truly does depend on your specific and individual circumstances, what is gonna be the best route for you. So I would say if you have any questions at all, reach out, uh, DM me, drop me a text, an email, uh, even a comment below and I will help get you directed to some great lenders here in town that can answer those questions for you. And, and be forewarned, uh, not all lenders are created equally. I mean, we work with some great lenders and we have a history and a track record of them doing what they say they're going to do and them delivering, but that's not always the case. Um, transactions fall apart every day where potentially lenders don't do all their due diligence. They uh, tell their potential client whatever they want to hear in the beginning of the process only to find out they're not qualified after their their uh, buyer has spent money on inspections and tied up the property and, and nobody likes that. So working with a good lender is super important. They can make sure that you know what to anticipate going into the transaction and your eyes are wide open. Let me know what you think, drop a comment below. Please hit that like button and uh, if you like what we're doing here with these videos, uh, hit that subscribe button. Uh, thank you so much for watching. Thank you for your time and have a great day.